Carl Brennan and Dan here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life, GBHBL.com for short. And it's Bloodstock 2024, the big talk, uh, for want of a better term. We're going to give you one last run through the entire festival. Events, things that are taking place, food, drinks, um, important information that we can share from our perspectives as being long-term Bloodstock goers. Um, and of course, the band's going to give you a rundown of all the bands that are playing across all the stages and which ones that we think you should be checking out or that we're particularly excited to um, see. So I guess we'll start off with a question that was asked off camera, but bring it up here anyway. Uh, excitement. Uh, as of the time of recording, it is Monday the 29th of July, so we are a little over a week away from Bloodstock. Are we excited, Brendan? Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I'm excited when I think about it, but I don't like. I, I don't tend to think that far out. You know, I yeah. like a lot of people. I have things that I need to do tomorrow, the next day, the next day. So, you know, when I look forward at the moment, I look as far as what my first meeting tomorrow is. But if I stop and I focus for a minute and I go like, oh, it's what is it? It's I don't know, ten days, nine nine days away or something like that, as of the time of recording. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, like I feel a a slight ripple, a slight tremor of excitement in my bowels. Is that a thing? I don't yeah. think so, man. Oh, <laughs> they say um, you can feel it in your walls, right? I they say you that. feel it in your waters, right? So presumably that's the same thing. Yeah, there you go. That's what it was. I just I just put it in a kind of slightly odder way. But yeah, so yeah, but it's that whole thing. And I think like, it's, I don't know, you know, if someone says to me, like, Brendan, are you excited for blood stuff? All up my head at the, like, you know, like when you're internalizing, like it's thinking like, well, right, tomorrow morning, nine o'clock to 10, I've got a meeting on this thing. Like, and, and then you go, you stop for a minute and think about it. Then like, yeah, it's more exciting. Yeah, yeah, I'd say the same thing pretty much. Like, of course, I'm excited. Like, the answer will always be yes. It's like a four day festival where I get to just drink all day. It's wonderful. But, you know, yeah, same thing. Yeah, no, I concur. Uh, you know, life still goes on. I still got uh, for a week's worth of work before I can fully relax. And while things are like constantly being built up and piles are being made and so on. You know, even the most basic shit, I feel like I'm keep getting wrong. We have had to buy three different sets of hip flasks because we bought, first we bought ones that were way too big. Like we're talking humongous. Like it was like 16 ounces, like way too big. Then we bought ones that were so small you could fit like two shots in there and that would be it. Pointless, basically. And now I think I finally found the one in the middle. There's a proper like Goldilocks thing. One's too big, one's too small. Now I think I found the one that's just right. So that's the level of where I'm at with Bloodstock. Can't even buy a hip flusks correctly <laughs> at the moment. Um, but come next, next Sunday, yeah, next Sunday, I'll have finished work that morning and I'll be on annual leave for a week for the entire Bloodstock week. So then I think it'll probably start to kick in. Yeah, I think because I've got work Monday and Tuesday, I probably won't be that excited, but that means I've got to get a lot of the stuff done this weekend in preparation for it. So that'll probably make it all feel a little bit more real. Yeah. But yeah, there's plenty of still to be excited about as we build towards it. The build is always a lot of fun. We've got a long trip, a fairly long trip from London that, you know, is part of the experience and stuff like that, that will be on the day. Uh, but once we're at the festival, there is a wide variety of things beyond bands to be done. And we're going to kind of go through some of them. Just going to give you a rundown based off notes that I've taken from uh, Bloodstock announcements and so on. I think the biggest thing this year uh, in regards to sort of a unique event, obviously revolves around the ashes of Lemmy, the bass player and vocalist of Motorhead. If you do somehow not know that and you're randomly watching this video, uh, Bloodstock is obviously going all out to honour this this year, obviously having the ashes there and that major part of it. Um, there's a lot being done around. There's a lot of stuff that I don't re didn't really know about until I did some more reading up on it about, including the recreation of Lemmy's dressing room, where you will actually be able to pay respects to the ashes. And obviously there's going to be things like uh, outfits and guitars and all of that in there. Some kind of a cool little memorabilia area, including uh, personal photos and stuff like that. The bust itself we unveiled on the main stage at 6.15 on Friday, directly after Hate Breed. And that's going to be a special ceremony with festival management and bands, and the band's Phil Campbell, Phil Campbell of Motorhead, and obviously Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons. 
before being placed in the Lemmy's dressing room, which is, if you wonder where that is, it's adjoining the rock and metal gallery, which is next to the signing tent. So if you know Bloodstock's layout, you should be able to picture this in your head immediately. Uh, obviously, the gallery is going to be closed there, but during that part but will reopen shortly afterwards. Uh, the dressing room, Lemmy's dressing room, will not be viewable prior to this event. Afterwards, it will be. So after that 6.15, so probably about 7 o'clock onwards-ish kind of time, then it's, you know, uh, I, I presume it's a queuing system. We want to do that and so on. Uh, but in addition, apparently, apparently, if you don't want to, if, if you wanted to see something beforehand, that in the gallery, there will be additional Motorhead memorabilia inside and elsewhere on the festival. The Motorhead Bomber, which is going to be displayed in the main arena near the entrance from the Midgard campsite. Also, apparently, listen out for the unmistakable Motorhead Siren, which will sound to mark the opening and closing of Bloodstock this year. So there's a lot, lot of little things going on around that I didn't quite know about. Listen, I think this is super cool. Obviously, Lemmy's Association of Bloodstock is quite important. We have the Lemmy's Bar and over the years and stuff like that. Um, I'm not super hot on the kind of like um, going into these galleries and stuff like that. Uh, it's not really something I like to do at a festival. But I am considering, depending upon cues and how things look and busyness, uh, if there an opportunity to actually get in and see this dressing room or you know as much just to you know see what it's like uh and certainly check out things like the bomber and all of that hmm. yeah i think it's really cool um yeah. yeah they're obviously as well as that they have one of the um dressing up themes is is motorhead isn't it uh let me of specifically as well so i i think it's really cool like i'm, I'm the same as you in that I probably won't join like a five hour long queue to, to get into something like that at a festival. Mm. However, if it's, you know, not, not too bad and you can get in there in the next 10, 15 minutes, it would be very, very cool to do it because it's the piece of heavy metal music history, really, or, or rock music generally, you know, it's probably bigger than, than just heavy metal music history. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 it is a bit, there's a kind of strange kind of morbidness to the, to the whole, Thing. Not not so much like oh look here's some outfits here's the dressing room like kind of recreated and all that sort of stuff but but the kind of paying respects to the ashes and yeah you know oh you can take a photo and all that sort of stuff there's a kind of strangeness to that I find a little bit in my head mm. like oh look at me I just post on Instagram hey it's me with Lemmy's ashes you know it it does it does it is a bit unsettling when you stop to think about it but there might be controls and stuff like that maybe when they're like oh no look you can take photos around the dressing room sort of stuff but like that that's like a, a no-go sort of thing so that's just just kind of guessing but i think it's a cool thing it's a one-off kind of unique experience and i think if i'm correct the a lot of the stuff then moves to like a museum somewhere doesn't it uh, off season yeah. and then you know but, yeah, so stuff, look, yeah yeah if i get an opportunity i'm gonna try and like catch as much of it as i can so Obviously, Dan, you're, 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 you're... It's, I think it's really, it's nice that they're doing it. I do agree with maybe the, I'm not sure on the whole, like having the ashes there, like that feels a little bit weird to me. Like, I let the man rest. I don't know. You know, that's, I think that's how I think about it. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he's resting, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's an element of like, <laughs> let me, obviously lived a specific lifestyle and now he's dead he's still going to festivals which is kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of let me like really yeah it's like yeah uh, it's still still there yeah. um and i feel like bloodstock would be his kind of festival to be fair so mm -hmm. it's quite nice i like a lot of the like the siren at the start and the end is quite cool i like that i don't know if we'll be there either at the start or the end but I guess we'll be there at the start. What what do they class as the official start? Yeah, what's the start? Is like that really Soon when the it's gonna be Friday, just, surely. Yeah, the main state the arena opening, I would think the arena opening on Friday, right? Twelve. No, it would be twelve. No, be, no of course yeah. Be like 10, 10, 10? Yeah. So, so I presume that, yeah. Sucks for all you late sleepers. <laughs> Depends on how it is, right? Yeah. Huge siren goes off and waking everyone up, that'd be awesome. And it's like five minutes long as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right, um, it's very cool. It's uh, certainly, I, I like I said, that's a lot of the details I took. And there's a lot more around that, a lot more little nuanced bits. I think if you kind of walk around the festival at like the weekend, you might end up coming across more things that maybe you didn't necessarily know that was going to be there, which is super super cool. But you know what you do know is going to be there? It's drink. Now this is a weird thing for me when I cover, but my god. 
the fucking detail in this and the variety stopped me in my tracks. So, drink. Obviously, a major important part of Bloodstock. You're going to bring your own and you're going to have Blitz in the campsite and all that. But you might want to buy some in the arena um, because, you know, you're not allowed to bring your own in and all that nonsense. But, you know, you're buying some drinks. Apparently, same price as last year, £6 a pint. Uh, £7 for some stronger stuff. But options. Now, there's a number of dedicated bars, seemingly more this year than ever before. In fact, according to Bloodstock, there are going to be 18 bars on site. 18. Uh, and I just couldn't work out where the hell those 18 were. Like, there's never, you don't mean 18, right? Yeah, so yeah. what the fuck? Where did they get 18 from? Yes, uh, in fact, and that's the thing, because it's all these little smaller independent ones. So it's almost certain to a certain level where it's like a food trick. So obviously you've got your major bars. Uh, like there's, there's going to be a real cider bar. Um, there's a four pinter bar, which is now going to be placed at the end of the Lemmy's bar, Yay. selling those really popular four pint containers. Those things yep. are going to be there. Um, nice. Elsewhere, right. Uh, we basically did a dedicated bars for Timothy Taylor with Hopical Storm and Landlord, Oakham Brewery, uh, Guinness, Red Bull, and Captain Morgan Rum, plus the Rock and Roll Jack Daniels Truck, and if you're in the Serpent's Lair, a Mon Amarth Beer. Um, Northern Monk are going to have a special bar selling Malevolence Beer. That's and good. Iron Maiden's Darkest Red Wine is available all weekend across the bars as well. So I'm saying there's like, some cool shit going on here. But Bullet Bourbon, Western Cider, which is Stoford and Stoford's Dark Fruit stuff, uh, Noraland Organic Cocktails, which are on draft in Lemmy's VIP and the Sophie Bars, Cameron's Road Crew and Overkill, Coors, plus loads of different guest casks and all of that are going to be there. Non-alcoholic choices include Holy Faith from Northern Monk, Bitburger Zero, but also Guinness Zero, Manga Cider Zero, all across the bars. It does feel like there's been a bit of a step up in this regard, right? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 a little bit. Like, so, like that that one, say that sells the four pint jugs. You know, that's like just this like add on bit at the yeah. end of the Lemmy bar. So, like yeah. when you kind of say, "Well, that's a bar," the Lemmy bar's a bar. So you can see how you might get to eighteen if you're just 18, portioning yeah. part of the bar off and saying this part of the bar sells just this thing. But sure. rather than being a whole new bar, it's it's. But like it's cool. It seems like there's a lot more there, which is great. Um, I, I really like the idea of like the band specific kind of branded alcohols being on sale at a metal festival. I think that's oh, cool. Yeah. Like, even if it's not a nice beer, it gives you something to try. You know, I'll be more than happy to try the Malevolence beer, see what that's like, the Amon Amar beer. And like rather than kind of walking up to those, you know, I've got your 50 ales there and you're just having a look and going, oh, I'll try that, I'll try that. Like, it kind of gives you something to zero in on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and have a crack at that. I probably won't go for the red wine. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not, not a festival drink for me but um yeah. and also i've never have been and never will be a fan of draft cocktails like mm. cocktail cocktails through like the pepsi tube so you know you press that button for lemonade that button for pepsi or that one for a pina colada and i'm just like dude the shit in that tube man <laughs> yeah but but yeah that's just that's just me i can see why it's been fun but i think it's cool that they've managed to hold the price i think these days six quid a pint or 650 a pint or whatever it is reasonable for a festival like more than reasonable to be honest yeah, oh I yeah I, was, I can't remember what i was paying that slam dunk but i think it was near the eight 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 fifty a pint so good on them yeah for I that. Think, I, yeah i think it's more than reasonable but like look you know the most things like you know yourselves right like um one of the things we often or i often struggle to do but i don't mind trying it i, I do like my beer i like to try different beers uh, so I'm more than happy to go up there and I'll try that one and that one. But it is nice to find that one you can settle on and be. So the more range there is, you know, a, a fair few IPA, the few lagers, you know, as well as your sort of dark uh, craft ales and all that sort of stuff. Like having that uh, selection, I think is really, really cool. Absolutely. Struggling, I'm struggling. This year we Str find one. Struggling to picture like 18 bars. I guess yeah. sort of one of those things we'll have to see when we get there. I do think, like, if you think, remember, like, last year, for for example, you know, you, ha you have one in each tent, obviously. Yeah, you've got, like, um, Sophie, EMP. But then in the Sophie, there was the main Sophie bar, but then there was also a little, like, Stouffer Press or whatever sort of bar beside it. Was. It. it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, then you have the Lemmy's bar, and then on the side of the Lemmy bar, you've got the jug thing. So that's another two Ooh. bars there. There was, um next to, like, where all the uh, big signs and all that were, there was, uh, I think it was an Oakham Brewery van. 
Mm. You also get the whiskey place in the middle, don't you? The, yeah, you get the, 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 hob, the, hobgob, the Hobgoblin in VIP. Yeah. There's that one. And, the re- and, and you also get those like vodka Red Bull stands dotted about as yeah, well. Yeah, they count as bars, don't they? But I think there's still some extras in there, but I don't think it's like, like in our head, we're probably thinking like, what, there's only like five or six? That's like 15 extra, but I think it's probably yeah. more like an extra four or five. But that's still cool. Yeah. That's still cool. I, I think you're right as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool though. I'm pretty happy with all that. I just hope we find the one drink that we, you know, I mean, we do find that one because that's obviously one of our biggest struggles every year is just finding that one drink that we really want to kind of stick to. Yeah. yeah. Um, not such a problem with food. So we are going to go through the vendors and really mainly be just, I want recommendations uh, based off eating in the past that we can send out to people. So first I want to throw out that Gregory K ring, the Espresso Coffee House and Fat Frank's Camp Shop are there as per regular coffee. And of course your essentials with Fat Frank's Camp Shop. You forget anything, you lose anything, you get a punchy, you need your airbed blown up. Fat Frank's is there for, I don't work for them. I've never actually been <laughs> in there or used them. I just know they are a bloodstock staple and have saved a lot of people. Okay, VIPers, this is fucking brilliant. Right, so VIP in the campsite, we have struggled. Oh my goodness me, have we struggled over the years to get something decent in the VIP campsite area. And last year's choice was your generic ass, we do everything and do everything average. Rather than just doing one specific or several specific things and doing them really well, th- that's what we've had. This year, we have something called Ron and Maeve's Dirty Fries. That is what they're called. And basically, they're brand new to Plus 2024 and going to be in the VIP campsite. And what they seem to do are a specific set of things, both based on breakfast and food later on. And the breakfast thing is a huge load of dirty hash brown breakfast, complete with beans, tomatoes, bacon, cheese, eggs, any combination you choose. And immediately, I'm like, boom, there it is. One thing done well, rather than mm. five, ten things of bacon and sausage and all of that. But alongside that, it's basically skin on dirty fries all for the day with variable <laughs> toppings that you can swap in and out. And I'm like, you know what? This could be a very good food place. Alongside the one is it Scandinavia. That is, I think it is the, that's going to be in the VIP Serpent's Lair area. It seems like having these... Uh, independent individual non sort of massive company trucks that are doing one or two things really well seems to be a better idea i was very pleased to see that obviously brendan as a person that's up before most of the mm-hmm. people at the festival um yep. you tend to go to these places first and eat are yeah. you excited by the idea of having a more nuanced and specific choice no no <laughs> no look, i'll be honest with you, i'm not i'm not specifically but like, the, the place that was there last year like Coffee wise, they actually did a nice coffee. That mm. that like tends to be the first thing I get anyway. You know, I was just go up there and grab myself a, a a latte or an americano or something like that. And their, their coffee was all right actually. It wasn't a bad coffee. Um, food wise, I mean, it, it remains to be seen. Like, because realistically, like if you break this down, like I'm not trying to put Ron and Maeve down. I've done that eating there. They might be a million times better. But the food at the other place wasn't terrible. You know, and they, they you know, realistically, what they did is when you went there, they had you know, like those metal kind of containers in there that had one had sausage in it, one had beans, one had hash browns, one had eggs, one had that sort of stuff. And you chose what you wanted to put in a bap or you didn't have to have it in a bap. You had a breakfast. So when the place says that we're there and we can do baked beans, tomatoes, bacon, cheese, eggs, or any combination you choose, that is no different. Mm. That is the same thing. Walking up there, seeing all the things out in metal and saying, oh, it gives a couple of hash browns, a couple of them, a couple of, of them, and a couple of them. So I don't see anything in that that makes me go, this is instantly going to be a hundred times better than anything that was there before. However, they you know, can prove me wrong. But I didn't think the thing that was there last year was that bad. The only thing that was a problem with it was if you just got a roll, you got like a lot of bread, like a load of like bread. It was like, you know, the bacon was nice. The sausage was nice. There was nothing wrong with the way they cooked the food or anything like that. It was just that the bats were fucking huge and there's a couple of sausages in it. So by the right. time you'd eat, eat your way around like, you know, 14 kilos of bread to get close to a sausage, you were kind of done with it. <laughs> you know, but like they were, I, I didn't find them terrible. And obviously I'm looking at it slightly differently this year, you know, having my daughter there with me as well. One of the things that she was quite excited about, which, she, you know, which, um, um, we'll see, obviously, hopefully they do some healthier options as well. Mm-hmm. But um, the place last year uh, always sold things like slices of watermelon, which is the thing like Rose is more likely to be like, oh, like big slice of the watermelon for breakfast. So I'm hoping there's a few healthier options too, because she's unlikely to want to eat, you know, dirty fries or, or hash browns, eggs and cheese in the morning. So um, we catered to vegan, halal, gluten free, most allergies. Yeah, it doesn't really go into too much detail on that. This is yeah. just uh, pulled from the detail of bloodstock uh, more than anything else. Um, 
Yeah, I yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. It it remains to be seen. This be, we've we've had over the years, we've had and obviously good and bad. I'm gambling on, and they should do, and I hope they do. But there's no mention of them uh, doing teas and coffees. I'm but they should do. They do. Yeah, because that that would be the thing more than anything else. Is like when that opens, I tend to go over to the shower and all that, come back, and then have to wait around half an hour, and then I take a wander over and grab myself a coffee. So you know, I'm sure they will. Most places do drinks, don't they? So. Yeah, and I'm uh, not hundred percent sure. Even though it wasn't listed on the Bloodstock website, that hadn't actually been updated in a little while. I'm pretty sure the coffee place, the monks, monks, I can't remember mm. what it's called, the regular coffee place in the VIP uh, Serpentine area is back again this year. Um, so yeah. there is that at least. Okay, what I'm going to do is fly through the 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 the, the, the vendors, um, and in most cases, it should tell you exactly what it is, um, and what we'll, 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 any that you want to particularly discuss. So we got Roman rotisserie. Chicken. Uh, Ran Ranib's Razoi Indian, traditional Punjabi food. That one took me back. I was I like, think okay. that's really cool that they're there. The problem with both of the first two, like I know your feelings on chicken at a festival anyway, mm. uh, and Indian food is not got good for your ass. <laughs> catering Greek, which is Greek food. Premier Catering Toasty. Premier Catering Loaded Dog. These are some familiar ones that you will see at many festivals in a bit of bluster before. Perfect Pizza. Now, for all you TikTokers that want to stand in a long queue for what is basically just a fucking jacket potato, Spudman is there. Now, listen, got no beef for the dude. I think he's very personable, likable, and I've watched plenty of his TikToks and all that. But, but when you break it down, folks, it is still a fucking jacket potato. And that is about where it ends. This guy is going to be crazy busy all weekend. Um... I have no interest in jacket potatoes most times, let alone at a festival. Uh, but I just want to mention the fact he is going to be there. And I do think he's going to be wildly popular because he is a TikTok personality. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool that he's there. I mean, it's good yeah. press for Bloodstock, isn't it? <laughs> oh, absolutely. There's, you know, openly as well. Like, I, I'm going to presume that he does very good jacket potatoes. Yeah, I, I don't think you popularity alone doesn't get you very far in, in catering and food, does it? If your food's shit, I think eventually you're going to get called out for that. Uh, I don't mind the jacket potato, to be honest with you. I won't join a fucking mile-long queue for one. But I can imagine, you know, a nice jacket potato being a good stodgy food to have if you've been on the drink all day. Dan, you're, you're of a younger persuasion, more likely <laughs> to be on the TikToks and the Instagrams and all that. Uh, where do you lie with Spudman? I just don't, I don't really care. I think, I think I'm, a, I'm slightly too old for it. Um, Fair think... enough. But I mean, if there's not, a, if there's like not a huge queue, I wouldn't mind going and getting a little jacket potato because I've seen the videos and they, I, I like jacket potatoes and I, yeah. I want one with the spicy beans and the crispy onions. Yeah, and, he, and if it goes by the videos, if he does the same thing here, he loads the shit out of it like it's a proper meal. Like, do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. going to be skimping. So, love it. It's good to know. All right, then we've got catering duck. Obviously, we know what that is. The Wrap Shack, which is basically wraps people, all different types from veggie to chicken and so on. Uh, we've got crepes from Green Event Catering Crepes. Great British fudge bus, which I actually had to look up. No, I, I I was like, that can't just be fudge, right? No, it is. It's sweets. Uh, with fudge, sweets, basically. A sweet bus, fudge and all that. I'm sure that was there last year. Was it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks yeah, familiar because it it's like a red bus. Yeah. I remember it. Okay, uh, g and Donut and Coffee. It's called Donut and Coffee. I'm pretty sure we know what we're getting with that. Texas Smoker is there, but to be fair, I've not been eating it as much in recent times. I've been trying to be more veggie there. Uh, event Catering Specialist Fish and Chip. Event Catering Specialist Donut. Event Catering Specialist Churros. So one company doing all of them. Easy Wok Chinese. Uh, you know what to do with those types of food at a festival. Uh, D and J, which is the company, has a lot of them here. So we've got salt and chili chicken, loaded fries, chicken, vegan, burger and fries. So they've got like five stores, according to the Bloodstock uh, website. Hot Wok Noodle Bar. Uh, how is this place still going? I'm pretty sure all anybody ever does is buy it and then immediately dump it on the floor as soon as they turn around. I've never not, I've never actually seen someone eating this, actually sitting there and eating it. I presume it all just falls at the bottom and it ends in a pile on the floor that we all step into, right? <laughs> Buddy man's bunny chow. Uh, mm. Likely to be a place I spend a lot of time at the weekend for the substantial side of things. Yeah, so good. Every, I tried it one time last year and then it was just what I ate for the rest of the time. 
Yeah, because they Brilliant. do the the vegan chili that's so mm. good. It's yeah, it's just it's nice food, man, and it's filling as well. So filling, stodgy, and you get like lots of the flavor, and then you've got like the bread and the, the chili yeah. all in it. Yeah, it's fucking sick. Yeah, we're all champions of it, and many people are. There's a reason why it is the case. A couple more. Uh, one that I actually want to try for the first time this year, Big Mouth Goiza, which is handmade Japanese dumplings from the Yorkshire Dales. Uh, you can get them vegan as well, and I think that sounds great, and I really want to try them. We've got Big C's Catering doing mac and cheese in the mac and cheese store, which has been pretty good over the years as well. And something called Tega Burritos. It's burritos, you know what you're getting there with it. Where do you expect to spend most of your weekend eating, do you think? Uh, right so obviously again you've got to plan it differently for different people i've got a kid, a kid with me so i know for me personally bunny man bunny chow will be my main stop yeah um but you know i'm all right i'm easy with a lot of things i'll probably pick up some like loaded fries every now and then just to sort of tide you over but my because of my daughter being there she's not gonna like hit any of the things that come with too much in the way of flavoring and spice uh, so some of those things like, you know, and I'm sure for other families that are there with young kids as well, you know, the fact that you got the sweet trucks and the crepes and all that sort of stuff are a bit of a godsend, yeah. you know, so like just that little boost of sugar for them. Um, I can see her, the jacket potatoes uh, and the pizzas being something that she, she's keen on. Um, what about you, Dan? Where do you expect to spend your weekend? Probably, well, I've picked up Bunny Chow and uh, the Texas Mocha Tail loads um even before she was planning on coming i was like yeah these two places they're, they're so fucking good um there's also that you you did miss one on the list which is just those yorkshire puddings thing. no it's no but it's they gone. Got, no is no, it gone it's yeah it that's not up to date they are out they're gone they're not they're not there oh, wow because, because uh, of what happened to download right i couldn't find accurate information about whether it, some people say it is the same company others say it's not i am not touching it with a barge pole because i don't know if it's the same company or not but i know regardless they're not at bloodstock and um even if they were weren't the ones at download the, the, the whole yorkshire pudding brand at a festival has been hit so badly by that i don't think anybody would trust a reputable company at a moment mm. yeah <laughs> I reckon the the ones will be Smoker and Bunny Chow because they're fucking delicious. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, third Bunny Chow. I expect to spend a fair bit there, but my other one is probably I spend a lot of time at a Greek place. I particularly love that type of food and the freshness that you get with salads and all that. And as I said, I hope to try some dumplings over the weekend. But I'm gonna try and keep it super simple. I I said to my wife, I've said I'm gonna try and do the entire festival uh, vegetarian. Uh, not always guaranteed because in particularly in the morning that can be a little harder to do but I'm going to try and do it completely vegetarian I've, 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 I'm very good at it these days and I did pretty well last year as well um, just purely for like you know my own gut reasons more than anything else and certainly avoid spicy foods and all of that and basically by sticking to those three buddy chow um, with the veggie uh, vegan, vegan, vegan option there uh, Greek stuff um, again uh, halloumi easy to do there and um the dumplings come a vegan option as well i don't see it being too hard yeah they got rid of the paella place it's not listed but i don't know how comprehensive that list was to be fair and you know the bloodstock website isn't that good at the moment it's not been updated in a while uh, i'm getting a lot of this information from posts and mm. stuff that went pop in social media more than anything else and then comparing the two I mean, the big, the biggest one that I it's not been announced at all at any point, so I'm sure isn't there is the one that Gemma basically lives at, which is the pie place. Oh uh, shit! Oh yeah. Which has always done very, very well there. So I was surprised not to see that there. There's always been long queues for it, and people have always spoken positively about the food there. So one of those things, right. I guess. I took this list from a combination of what I did was I took it from the Bloodstock website and then I compared it to the post that they put up with the mm. updated food list, which I think was last month. And yeah. that's how I knew the Yorkshire pudding thing wasn't correct anymore. Yeah, now we were keeping an eye on it. So yeah, we're, we're confident that the pie place isn't there. But There we go. What's she going to do? Oh my God. Well, Spud man. Doing a queue for jacket potatoes, I imagine. There yeah. it is. All right, entertainment, because of course it's not all about bands. Uh, There's plenty of entertainment going on. Now, uh, this one was interesting from Thursday and uh, on Thursday and Saturday night from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m., the new blood is going to host Bloodstock's 
biggest silent disco to date. So if you go to the New Blood stage on either of those nights uh, between those times, you get three live channels playing club and dance bangers, rock and metal or party cheese, respectively. You like a silent disco, you like a little boogie, listening to your own stuff, you can absolutely do that at the New Blood stage on two nights of it. I think it's a very clever idea to use the New Blood stage for that. I'm surprised they're not doing it every night of the festival, but on the Thursday and the Saturday at least, and it's very cool for people. Having done Art Tangent last year, which has, I think, the UK festival's biggest silent disco, and part of that reasoning is because there's nothing else going on. Everything stops and then it's just the disco. So you either go back to your tent and have a drink or you go to silent disco. Uh, I can't stand, I hate the idea of a silent disco. So I'm never, go I'm not going to be a fan of it and not going to do it. But I can see the appeal for people. I really can. I think this is going to be very popular. Yeah, I mean, the biggest win for me in that is that they took, they forgot them the fuck out of the surfer's lair. So job done. <laughs> oh, of course that yeah that does doesn't it yeah i mean unless there's going to be one in there as well but like i i, I don't get it it's not for me it's not my thing so like but i know people like it so i'm happy for them but yeah it's not for me okay I mind uh, just a uh, disco like with an actual <laughs> dj but like the whole like wearing headphones thing like because then you could how are you talking to your mates you're, you're like oh sorry hello you're all right you're, not, you're enjoying you're the song to. silent isn't it silent like, that just sound, it's like have you like, not all seen all I can imagine video? is like the like squeaky shoes on the floor sound. Like, <laughs> yeah. Have you not seen the ice? Have you not seen the isolated videos? You should Google Google the isolated videos. They're fucking weird. Uh, but happily, they do have other options. Selfie tent from twelve a.m. to two a.m. on Thursday. You've got DJs there. Friday, all different DJs per night. DJ press play on Thursday. Uh, Friday brings the Blood Ray with DJs Little M and Lloyd, offering a choice of EBM, industrial, technical, and heavy beats. Selfie tent on Saturday is taken over by DJ of Crocolypse and the mighty seething Akira, who are going to be doing our exclusive DJ DJ set on a Saturday. And then Sunday you got DJ Rich Harris Desert Fest uh, with a party one. So every night in the selfie stage you have djs as well late night uh, but also and this is the obviously quite important thing um back at the campsites midgard uh midgard the main campsite for some late night inflatable shenanigans including the now legal uh and safe version of bin jousting from 11 p.m till 2 a.m thursday to sunday you can take part in some safe legal bin jousting action um i can't i'm hoping to go over there to watch not to take part but to watch like i want to kind of try and do that one night i'm not entirely sure i will because i'll forget and be drunk and all that but i hope to get over there and see it personally uh, have you have you guys got any temptation considering it's now legal and safe and all of that you got any temptation to take take part nah nah I, give I mean, me enough. Give me enough drinks that I probably would. <laughs> you know, I think it's cool that Bloodstock have found a way to incorporate it because the alternative is probably trying to find a way to shut it down completely mm. before it become too much of a insurance risk or something like that. You know, so it's cool that they didn't. You know, they tried to accommodate it, but I guess there is an element of it losing its appeal once it's, you know, allowed and legal because i think part yeah. of it is craziness and the naughtiness and and part of it i guess as well was the fact that you're not really meant to be doing it you know and they keep taking our bins away but we keep bringing them back and that you know this. so i i don't know I, I wonder if it'll have the same magic i wonder that too and i suspect it i i suspect that you do in like but that may be kind of what they're hoping for which is as it loses its magic and its luster it just disappears yeah but you know what humans are like so if you make that legal We'll invent something else. That's worse. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That is very human things. Obviously, the early access. If you are one of the people coming out early access on a Wednesday, you'll get DJs and flatables and a couple of movies. Which, speaking of movies, brings us back to the VIP as well. Family movie screenings every day, Friday and Sunday at 9.30 in the Serpent's Lair. And you will have The NeverEnding Story, The Goonies, and Hocus Pocus. Um to choose and enjoy there. But you'll also get a metal comedy movie at 2.30 on Friday and Sunday. And those movies are Wayne's World 2 and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So you want to sit there and chill and watch a movie. Might be beneficial for you, I guess, 9.30 in the morning, potentially. Um, you and, Ro I don't know, you and Rose go and watch Never Ending Story. Happy family movie. Yeah, the, it's a weird thing with Never Ending Story. It's probably like, I can't, most kids won't be interested in it. It's more for me, that one. Mm. <laughs> 
Uh, VIPs can also look forward to exclusive bands and DJ sets, of course. Pop-up puppet cinema, face painting from Alex, Alex, Alice Bizarre, which benefits the Sophie Lancaster Foundation as well. And never mind the Bloodstocks pub quiz and, of course, more in the Serpent's Lair. That is VIP exclusive stuff. If you're in there, fantastic. You'll have plenty to enjoy. But elsewhere around the festival as well, Rock Fit returns. In the arena, the battle area, at 10.15 a.m. on Friday Saturday and Sunday. If you want to get up and you want to do some exercises and they encourage everybody to try and take part, all skills, all ages, all abilities. It's a bit of fun. They welcome you all. And it has become a very popular thing. It even happened at Download this year as well. Anyone get up for Rockfit in this video? I mean, I, I wouldn't rule it out, to be honest with you, because I'll be up and I'm definitely much more in a health kick these days. So, cool. That would be I wouldn't awesome. necessarily rule it out either, but I don't. I just don't see myself getting around to it. <laughs> I rule myself out completely. No, thank you. It's <laughs> not for me. Um, but what I wish, no, what I, what I hope to see. So a special war masterclass with UFC and combat sports titan Josh Barnett is taking place at the Battle Arena on Sunday at four thirty. Now this is all completely sold out. It's quite exclusive, but you can watch it. Now I don't want to take part in it, and nor do I care too much about the kind of concept behind it. But I am a fan of Josh Barnett from the wrestling perspective as much as anything else. I like Josh Barnett's blood sport and all of that. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, cool, Josh Barnett's there. I said to Lou, oh, Josh Barnett's there. That's so cool. So we are kind of like, oh, maybe we'll try and see if we can catch a little bit of that, watch a little bit of it from, a, from the back kind of thing. Um, what's, any thoughts or feelings on that? No. No? <laughs> uh, the Vikings. They're going to be back doing their thing, hitting each other and stuff like that. Twice a day, Friday and Sunday, 11.30 and 2.30. PM. Uh, have you ever seen this stuff live before? You have, yeah. Yeah, I you think it you're likely to do it again? You are likely to do uh, it again because of Rose? I think I've, I, you know, well, I watched some of it last year for probably about half an hour. Uh, we got some food, and then we were standing over in that area watching it, and it and it's great fun. Um, it won't. The thing with any of these things, like it won't ever usurp if there's a band on. I want to see, so it will depend on that. Um, but you know. Yep. I think I think it's a fun thing. It, it's genuinely good, a, a good laugh. Fair enough. Uh, elsewhere as well, you got axe throwing uh, at a battle axe stand and a firehand forge, where local, which is like a local blacksmith stall. The rock and metal gallery, of course. The Nordic Spirit Gaming Arena with modern and retro video games to play, including some VR additions this year as well. The signing tent. Uh, as of right now, as the time of recording, those haven't been announced, but I think they're expected to be announced at the same time as stage times are as well. Uh, and situated next to that is going to be the brand new Kerrang booth, as in the Kerrang magazine. And from what I gather is that it's got exclusive limited merch drops, so you can basically go there and potentially pick up a like limited drop. Um, it, hey, I think that sounds like... I, I, that's fine. Go nuts. Uh, I find that sounds awful. Um the whole like, oh, come this time, you'll get this specific thing, unless it's free, like that kind of thing. But hey, um, it's it's stuff for people. Because obviously around that as well as all the shops too. You've got tons yeah. and tons of shops again. Yeah, not too interested in the crane side of things. It depends what they're okay. doing. Because like, are, are they selling exclusive limited merch for the bands that are playing there or just exclusive limited merch that Kerrang just happens to have for bands that... It wasn't... Yeah, I couldn't quite work out if it was like yeah. freebies. If you were hung around, you might get a freebie. Or if it was going to be like, oh, this new drop is now available for the next, like an auction almost, like an hour and a half right. only. Like I couldn't quite work it out. Um, it might be one of those actually take a look as you walk past yeah. and work it out from there. Um, but yeah, like tons of shops as always. I'm hoping for a little bit of freshness this year. Can't guarantee it, which will sit. It'll be nice, but all the usuals will be there. There's always stuff to buy from. You want your Viking horn to drink during a modern mark, it's all there. You want some vinyl, you'll get it all. But there are some other small bits as well I want to mention. Of course, we have the Cup Redemption Scheme, which is returning this year. You redeem prizes for collecting used cups. Uh, collect them and hand them in at Lemmy's Bar, and you get a stamp on your collector's card. The year This year's prizes are as follows. 50 cups, one free pint or spirit worth six pound. 100 cups, 15% off Bloodstock merch, or one meal voucher worth 12 pound. 250 cups, one Bloodstock Festival shirt. 600 cups, jump the queue to the signing tent for one whole day. 750 cups, access to the Serpent's Lair VIP hospitality area for two people. And 1,000 cups, 
watch a band from the side of the stage or in the pit for the first three songs subject to terms and conditions so plenty there if that's your thing we often see youngsters quite young children sent out and about to collect the cups as a as a, an incentive and to keep them busy as well brendan hmm. you gotta send rose out and about to do this nah <laughs> nah i've bit, told her about beyond it. She, yeah it's not she, she doesn't she doesn't want to do it she 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 she's aware that if she wants a t-shirt she only has to ask for it or save her money so she's okay that way but uh, you know, I've spoken to her about it and she likes the idea of like giving them to the littler kids, you know, and helping them collect them up a little bit. So like that's kind of more her jam. Like mm -hmm. if she sees little kids running around collecting them that, you know, she's trying to grab a few cups here and there, collect them up and then give them to a kid. I, I think it's a cool thing. I really do. I think like everyone benefits from it. You know, it is kind of cool and cute to see the little kids kind of running around and you go over and give them your cup and they're all like, oh, thank you and all that sort of stuff. That's cool. Uh, it does help keep litter off the floor which is also cool um and hey you know it kind of teaches in a way a good message right doesn't it it's like don't put litter on the floor you get rewards that's it there you go. and continuing with that obviously the green aspect is now something we're as a group i think quite proud of our um ability to walk away from the festival keeping it clean we're very proud of the fact that when we walk away haven't packed up our cards on the last stuff that what we've left is nothing but a mark that we were there based off the the the, the, the tent shape that was there we're very pleased that and so should you if you do that as well continue to do that it's so so important but addition this year there will actually be tent donation points at every campsite on monday morning uh basically look for a tent donation flag if you can't be asked to bring your tent back you don't really want to do it bring it to there it will go to charitable benefit uh, so that is a new thing that's really cool to hear this year. Of course, as well, to encourage a level of tidiness, because as great as it is that we keep ourselves tidy and everyone around us does, and so on, not everybody does. Now, we as Bloodstock, we've seen, obviously, are nowhere as bad as some festivals are. You see some horrific pictures of festivals that are larger in scale, but also just goddamn awful. But to encourage that as well, you can get free bin bags. Just go ask at the uh, tent points throughout the weekend. I'm going to recycling bins, but you can get free bin bags. Just take one, fill it up, and then ask for another. But come on, man. Um, bring some with you and ask your neighbours. We've always got a fucking huge role, put it that way. Do you know what I mean? So, like, you know, if you're near us and you need a bin bag, just ask. We'll give you one, absolutely. And, you know, because we want, just, let's just keep the place tidy which is super, super cool. Alongside that, there are other bits like the T-shirt and CD Amnesty this year. You've got some old T-shirts, some old CDs, as long as they're clean and tidy and you can then drop them in and they go towards charitable things, selling off donated items as well for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation and Derbyshire Blood Bikes. Um, of course, there's places like the medical and welfare tent where you can kind of go to and relax and stuff like that. You can also visit the Samaritan's Marquee, which is going to be located in the Midgard campsite for a non-judgmental confidential chat. Uh, Bloodstock supports hashtag safer spaces and hashtag ask for Angela. Uh, if you need a little bit of information about that, do just Google what those terms mean um, and so on. Uh, also, Bloodstock is pleased to welcome back 1625 Outreach, which is a local service that specializes in supporting festival goers in relation to drugs, alcohol, and personal safety. They'll be working with the welfare on site um, and obviously there's a drugs amnesty, you know, no judgment. You want to go deal with something, you want to go handle something that you can do, of course. Uh, that's those serious side of things. The last little couple of things I just want to mention, of course, is Amon Amar are going to try a record-breaking thing this year. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this, which is a record-breaking for the world's largest Viking row during the performance of Put You Back Into The Oar. Uh, so that's going to happen during the Amon Amarth stage uh, show on the Sunday night headline slot. So if you want to be part of that, you know what to be. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, you mentioned Fancy Dress. We hear, obviously, the Motorhead tribute. We've also got dinosaurs, uh, dinosaurs, horror movie characters, and Beetlejuice too. Um, and apparently, I think that might be it on this part. Yeah, I, uh, the fun I think that isn't there also, um, I, I, I didn't know this, but I'm pretty sure Gemma mentioned it to me that it's um, pink for Sophie on Thursday. Oh, I, 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 don't, I thought people ask about that, but I don't know if that, I don't know if that was a thing confirmed or not. I would presume mm. there must be some, there, there must be a reason why, right? There must be a, it must be the case, right? There must be something. Yeah, there'll be something. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see it listed but to be fair I, i've taken a lot of information and jammed it into one document um 
Yeah, apparently, uh, the last thing I want to say yeah, was about, no, there's two, sorry. Uh, the fun fair, the Dodgems and the Walks are the only two things listed. They're the only two things that were there last year, so that makes a lot of sense. It's not so much a fun fair as more two rides. And as we said at the very, in another video, uh, basically, if you want to know who's playing Bloodstock 2025, the headline slots, the ones that are booked, after Cutch is set on Friday, basically stay stay up in front of the main stage, and it's going to come up after Clutch finish. Um, so I'll imagine that we'll get plenty of cheers and boos depending upon who pops up. Um, have I forgotten anything? Is there anything else you want to add there before we move on to bands? Um, I don't think you've forgotten anything. I mean, the, the only thing about this one, because we don't know it yet, is that obviously there'll be, I, uh, I guess, announcements for bands and stuff like that playing the Serpent's Lair and that sort of side of things as well, you know? I would presume so, yeah. It feels like we've still got... Uh, but basically, it looks like everything's going to kind of be wrapped up by Monday the 5th of August, and that's when stage times go live, and you'll be able to do your Clash Finders, you'll be able to work all this detail out, you know? Um, you know, there are unofficial Clash Finders out there that are based off, like, last year, but don't take them as golden. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do for the bands, folks, is because obviously we don't want to be here for the next couple of hours, is we're going to kind of fly through a lot of the stages, particularly... Um, the EMP stage and the New Blood stage, just listing the bands. And then um, when we get to the end, if we all have the same poster art, when we get to the end, you can kind of mention, go back and mention some of the bands that you're excited to see or interested to see off it. So we'll start with the EMP stage. Now, here's a problem, folks. Uh, the Bloodstock website is not updated. And uh, because of that, a lot of information isn't updated elsewhere. Finding out the actual days that these bands are playing at would involve having to literally go to article after article and write them down yourself. Because the poster that I've got, the most up-to-date poster, just has them all in one big group. So yeah. unfortunately, as much as I'd love to be able to break it down day by day with the EMP and New Blood, that isn't possible. I don't know why the Bloodstock website hasn't been fully updated. Doesn't matter. We, we've got the bands. We're going to go through them. And come next Monday, they have to be updated because they're all going to be on the goddamn app with stage time so you'll be able to follow along there but the mp stage has crowley flame bearer goblin smoker king kraken lethal evil lost brethren lloyd's trip lurcher mab or mab pinewood origin public execution rupture farms the gallagate murders warp stormer and yes that is our emp stage and in my opinion one of the strongest EMP stages we've seen over the years that we've been going. Um, does someone else want to talk for a moment and yeah. tell me what they're looking forward to seeing? Yeah, I was going to say it's the strongest EMP stage I've ever seen, but I think it's also the only one I've ever seen. So. <laughs> but um, oh, I, oh, 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 I just got what you did yeah, there. Ah. <laughs> there you go. It's late, but I'm still in dickhead mode. There we go. Um, I mean, there's a lot of lot of cool bands on there. Like a lot, not a lot of bands that I necessarily knew a lot about free them being announced for bloodstock but from playing them through playlists and that and a few that i kind of knew already uh a couple of that i'm particularly looking forward to are crowley um who are really cool uh king kraken uh gallagate murders uh yersin mab from an interested perspective and the one on there that i think i'm looking forward to the most is rupture farms mm. good shout dan uh I've got, perspective I've got two Go on, yeah. I've got a uh, King Kraken because I've heard lots of cool stuff, and I know that they were the headliner, guest headliner of the final London Metal the Masses, so that intrigued me. And Pine with Origin, uh, also the Gallagate Murders. Their name sounds quite cool. Yeah, Gallagate Murders okay. are. I don't know the Celtic kind of Dropkick oh. Murphy style. <laughs> I, um, I think I think you'll get. I, I just was just trying to say, like I know you obviously haven't come across them, but but I think you'll get on really well with Rupture Farms, which has that kind of hardcore mix with um, uh, grind rap sort of uh, grime. Even I have to. I check them out. Yeah, I so, agree with that as well. Um, I'm also kind of stoked to see Rupture Farms as well. I want to throw the Gallagate Murders out there, so that's three for three in that. Yersen as well, obviously massive fan of that band. I'm intrigued by Public Execution just because of the grind hardcore, grind hardcore crossover and the reaction we did, and that was only like a 40 second song in yeah. the in the de in the dev as well of all places. It was like okay, and weirdly, Public Execution might be up your street, Dan, because it does sit within the hardcore realm with grind crossing over there as well. I also have the same curiosity about 
Mab, MOB, we obviously both have that same vibe based off the reaction we did there. Fascinating to see what that's like. Um, hope it doesn't clash with anything because um, I do want to at least check out some of it. And uh, Goblin Smoker. I, well, sorry, King Kraken as well and Goblin Smoker. Big fan of Goblin Smoker. I want to go there and worship that fucking toad alongside everyone else. Um, but EMP is strong for me and I hope to see a lot more bands there this year than we normally do the Jägermeister stage previously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, New Blood. All right, we've got quite a few, so I'm going to fly through them and then we'll come back to the bands. Uh, Absolutes, Acadian, Atom Smasher, Biomechanical, Black Hole Divers, By Virtue Fall, Chubb, Convoy, Crow God, Crucible, Dead Flesh, Divided by Design, Disposable, Final Coil, Frog Lord, Hammer, Hellbearer, I-L or Ill, uh, Judgment, Kensai, Kraken, Walk, Waker, Lost to Light, uh, Nilanth, Running with Knives, Praetorian, Reverend Sun, Rogue Limb, Root Zero, Sathamel, Sempra, She Burns Red, Slaughterhead, Sleep in Motion, Smother, Space, Pistol, Stone Soup, Straight for the Sun, Them Bloody Kids, and Tim White and the Dead Beats. Okay, we'll go back around again. Brendan. <clears throat> all right, so again, mostly coming from, not all, but mostly coming from, um, playlists like pre-bloodstock um intrigued but i'm not sure if i love or hate them by a mechanical um it tricks you out that one i keep i keep mechanical as well because it's a natural word to say uh oh by mechanical you're right thank you good spot yeah yeah uh band i really really like and also i know my missus is gonna love we've been listening to him a lot is chub uh oh. really really cool quite quite old school punk kind of sound you know, but but good fun, good high energy stuff. We we um, know Chub. We now we know, know Chub. Chub, yeah. Uh who else beat, we got? Beat, so Kensei, Kensai. Yeah, we've been I've been listening to Wasted. That, that's the song that we're listening to most at the moment. Uh Kensai, Kensei, uh Praetorian, again not based on that off a reaction that we did where they were just really great fun. Sathamel, really cool band. Uh oh my god, straight for the sun. Uh, I'm, and intrigued by them bloody kids a little bit just based on the event they won. Really? Ooh. Well done. Um, I've only got a couple, uh, which is Chubb running with knives and straight for the sun. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Well, straight for the sun is one I also uh, highly recommend. Um, yeah, I, I'm a massively big them up, so I'm stoked to see them as well. I want to throw in Dead Flesh. Oh my God, Dead Flesh. This is going to be Deathcore Heaven. Dead Flesh, absolutely. When I saw them uh, were on the bill, shot, well, happy about that. Final Coil for a bit of progressive progressive rock and metal. Hammer, uh, the Scottish Metal to the Masters winners as well. Praetorian, big fan of them and listen to a lot of them as well. Rogue Limb, missed them at... Um, uh, what were we at? Why have I forgotten the name? Mangata, Mangata Festival. So hopefully check them out here. Seth and Mel are very, very cool as well. And them bloody kids I want to shout out as well was because they're doing good stuff. So yeah, plenty on the new blood stage as well. And plenty that I know of, I've heard of, and I'm intrigued by it as well. It's a strong stage again. And it's, I love, I love that. Thanks to obviously what we do in the build up and the reactions and the music and the playlist and all of that. It goes from, I haven't heard of any of these bands to sweet. I know like half of them now. Yay. Yeah, absolutely. And as we always do every year, like we'd recommend anyone that even if you know no one there, just pop your head in the news last stage every now and then because there's some good shit goes down in there. Hell fucking yes. And that brings us to the Sophie stage. Now we will do it day by day, folks. Uh, but again, I'll list off all the bands and then we'll come back to them there. So starting with Thursday, where of course we have the five bands playing the Sophie stage and we've got Acid Age, Tail Gunner, South of Salem, Hell Ripper and Evergrey. Now I have said in the past in previous videos when we talked about lineups that this is probably the weakest Thursday to date for me and I still stand by that. No one sought any of the bands. I like South of Salem. I do actually want to see Hell Ripper and I will check out some of Evergrey. But excited? No, there's nothing here that gets me excited. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same. There's nothing there that I'm like, oh, yes. You know, that's what I wanted to see. Um, Hellripper, I, uh, I want to see. Acid Age, I will see because they're the first band on and kind of feel like I need to watch the first band of the festival. So, um, you know, realistically, there's nothing else on. So chances are I'll pop my head in and probably watch most of the bands that are playing there and hopefully be more excited there than I am, like, 
looking at it now. Yeah, I uh, echo in a similar kind of sentiment. I'd like to see Acid Age, and I remember South of Salem from a couple of years ago. I think we did some reactions, and I had a couple of songs of those I liked. But yeah, I will check them out because I hadn't seen them before. Cool. Okay, sticking with the selfie stage, but we're going to jump to the Friday now. We start the day off with Haxed, followed by Burner, then Death Collector, then Exit Immortal. Is that Exit Immortal? Yes, Exit, Exit Immortal. Exist more. Thank you very much. Uh, this next band is Halapron. Uh, then we got Wolf. Then we got Darkest Era. Then we've got Eternal Champion, the Vintage Caravan, Caravan, followed by Igor. Now, uh, I will say again that overall, the selfie stage this year is one of the weakest selfie stage lineups for me personally. There are plenty of bands I want to see, but the overall picture, whereas previously years, I feel like I could have spent my entire festival in the on the selfie stage. This year, I suspect I'm probably going to spend the least amount of time there, like compared to previous, particularly compared to the last couple of years. There are still bands I want to see, but when I look at that, for example, on a Friday, I'm like, oh God, uh, it pretty much is the early part of the day. Hacks and Burner, Death Collector, Maybe Darkest Era, if they're not clashing with anybody else. But then I'm likely not going to be back until that night for Igor. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. Like, the for me the, as well, the Sophie stage this year is the weakest of all the stages, um, from my personal taste. Um, Burner, Death Collector. I kind of a little bit intrigued by Wolf. Um, you know, I don't never seen them live, and they're like 25-year kind of history, you know, sort mm. of thing, so little bit intrigued by that and then Igor at the end but um yeah definitely not really um, look feeling an awful lot there I'm really looking forward to seeing burner and exist them all okay um, you've got if you like what? like exist them all did a collaboration with like vexed not too not too long ago um that was quite good. Right. Um, and uh, that ba pretty much just based off that. If you're collaborating with bands like Vex, I'm like, fuck it, you must be cool. Hmm. Fair enough. Okay, let's jump to the Saturday then, where we start the day with Cauldron. Then we've got Unpeople. Then we've got Enemies Everywhere. Then we've got L L L L Ludovico Technique. Uh, then we've got Mimi Barks. Then we've got Red Rum. Then we've got I. What is that? Who is that? Asomel. Asomel. As um, SML, but with a V. Yeah. Combi Christ, Silosis, and Corpa Clarny. This selfie stage day is better for me. There's a fair bit more spread around that I'm interested in. I'm interested in on people early on. I am there for Mimi Barks. I adore Mimi Barks. And I also have never really, really given Combi Christ a lot of my time. So I think I'm going to try and check out Combi Christ for once and see what the fuss is about. Big fan of Silosis, think they're going to kill it, and likely to enjoy Corpaclani as a late night headliner of that day. Um, Okay, why were you laughing about Mimi Barks, man? I wasn't laughing. Yeah, I see you laughing. I smiled. It's only because okay. I, at, at the time when I was reading through them and you were reading them out, like in my head, I I, I went I, like you I, before you said Mimi Barks. In my head, I was like, oh fucking hell, Mimi Barks is there. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying shit. Yeah, I mean, like, like it's a better day than the Friday, mm. but 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 not by a huge amount. Um, in terms of bands that I have an interest in, uh, Ludovico Technique a little bit, but that's been pushed more by. Gemma in recent time because I didn't know what the Lud Ludovico technique is but when she was looking at the name of it she was very adamant that it's something to do with a clockwork orange and it, is it, it yeah it's the um thing that they do to Alex in a clockwork orange where they make him watch old Hitler movies and stuff like that so it was made up by like Anthony Burgess or something like that for the book and the band was right. stuff like that. so because of that we checked out some of it and it's like heavy 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 on the industrial side of things you know so it was quite interesting um Mimi Barks, I, I, you know, like, I don't know where I sit on this because I'm not a fan particularly, right? Um, but I kind of get a feeling that if I bring my daughter to it, that she'll enjoy it. That's the thing. I think it's it will be the sort of character and all that sort of stuff, you know, that, that she'll kind of get hyped about. So I'll probably come oh. along and see it just to see what, see what she thinks. Uh, I like Red Rum. Uh, I'm not feeling the same as you for like even wanting to check out Combi Christ to see what all the fuss is about. I'm not too bothered about the fuss in honesty. Uh, Silosis, cool band. And if I'm still standing and up for it, 
for the fun element. Not that I think I'll fit in there anyway, but call for Kalani. Fair enough. Dan, where are you at here this day? I don't know how you guys haven't mentioned Cauldron this entire time. Like, that is. I don't think I know some... them that well. Really? Cauldron are like absolutely more, would be my band to see that entire day. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I really highly recommend them. Um, and on that, also, I've never seen Silosis and I've only heard good things. So I'd love to check them out. Um, it's just, I don't know much on this stage. So it's a case of checking stuff out as it comes by. I just stick my head in if I've got nothing to do. You know, but then you've got the main stages and the new blood stages. There's always something to do. Mimi Box, man. Come come see Mimi Box. Uh, both you and Al will enjoy Mimi Box. All right, all right. Sunday then. Uh, Awake by Design start the day. And we've got Uzziah. Then we do not have Ry Ryujin, even though they're still on the poster. We actually have Moon Reaper. Uh, as Ryujin pulled out um, and Moon Reaper were booked as their replacement. And we've got Grow Street, Ancor. Sadvis, what the fuck does it say? Sadus, yep, Sadus, Zentrex, Infected Rain, and Satyric on a Sunday. The late night start, start is always harder to call because we may not be around for it. So as much as I'd like to say I'd like to see Satyric on, I can't even guarantee I'll still be at the festival at that point. Uh, but from that day, I'm probably most interested in Grove Street. Uh, I think that'll be some nice, nice wake me up during the day. Uh, a little bit of Zentrex and probably Infected Rain, probably Infected Rain. Oh, sorry, and Moon Reaper. Sorry, I, I forgot because they're not on a bloody poster. Moon Reaper as well, big fan of that band. Yeah, so I mean, I like Awake by Design. I'm quite disappointed that Reusion aren't there because I've been listening yeah. to them quite a bit and I like them a lot. Um, so, boo to that. Mm. Uh, outside of that, Zentrix, Infected Rain, and similar kind of thoughts on the Satyricon thing, really. Um, from Isaiah. Moon Reaper and Grove Street and probably a bit of Infected Rain for me. Grove Street and Isaiah, though, are the two bands for me to check out on that Sophie stage that day. Ooh. Main stage, Ronnie James Dio stage. We go to the Friday and we begin the day with Desert Storm. Then we've got Novosa, followed by Green Lawn, Grand Magus, Rotting Christ, Enslaved, Hatebreed, Clutch, and Old Path. Now, for me, this is a rarity. I could probably spend my day here and be happy. Up to a point, there's one band I just would happily walk away from and go do something else. But if I was just stuck here all day, I wouldn't complain. I don't want to be stuck here all day. And I'll probably, there's a couple of bands I could, like a couple of bands I, could, I would happily kind of miss to go see something else. But if this was my only choice, I'd be more than satisfied with every single band in this bill, except Hatebreed and the headliner, but the headliner is a totally different thing. That's purely, you know, that's that's a curiosity and I'll wait and see what's going on. But I don't care for hate breed. Seen them too many times in the past. Um, so I'm not too fussed about that. But the rest of it, I think that's a strong Friday. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, I just try not to choose like all the bands of family for me out of all of the ones on there. Probably Nervosa, Green Lung, obviously Rotting Christ are the three I'm most looking forward to. Um, obviously, I'm also to a degree looking forward to Clutch, but I'm not a huge Clutch fan, so it's an opportunity to see them rather than, oh my god, I can't wait to see Clutch. Mm. Um, I know that L's got an interest in Green Lung, um, so we'll probably catch them. Uh, Rotting Christ, I have heard many good things, mainly from Brendan, so I'll probably go see them with Brendan. Uh, and I, I have never seen Hate Brew before, and they've done a lot for, they're like, in their early days, they were kind of like hardcore overlords, innit? it? <laughs> yeah. like they were there for a lot of that, so I feel like I kind of have to like pay my respects and be like, hey, if, they're there. <laughs> if you've never seen them, you should definitely see them. I'm only, oh. I'm only being like, I don't want to see them because I've seen them live, not just live a lot at Bloodstock a lot. Yeah, they're very good live. They don't, they, they will get the crowd moving. Like they'll have good pits and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. Mm. What's everyone's? Why do we all have such beef with Opeth? None of us are like, oh, they can't wait to see. I Opeth. don't have any beef with them. I just think it's going to be a a, a, a Meshuggah style headliner. I think I'll get bored. Yeah, I think it's going to be dull. Yeah. I agree. That's kind of what I thought as well. And then as well, I don't know if it's just me, but I'd be more willing to see them if it was just like a best of festival set. But the fact that it's fan picked makes me want to see it even less. <laughs> yeah. I fan. actually prefer fan pick because I think the fans are going to stick to their best work and choose the heavier side of Opeth whereas Opeth might be like no we just want to play the stuff we've been playing for the last 10 years and 
like the fans chosen are like, no, mate, we're going to Blackwater Park and we're doing that shit. Just something like that, that kind of thinking. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. But either, either way, I don't expect to enjoy it. So I, but I am going to watch a bit of it out of curiosity and see if it holds my attention. The moment it doesn't, we've got somewhere we can always go uh, that we tend to do on a Friday night anyway. Yep. Saturday. Deatus, Ignea, uh, Crypta, Forbidden, Unleash the Archers, Deicide, Whitechapel, Malevolence, Architects. Uh, this is a mixed bag for me. Um, you know, Deatus, Ignea, they're both cool bands, five of them. Want to see Crypta more than anything else. Then it's really the top end. I will curiously watch some of Deicide. Curiously. More because of the legend status and the lack of things seen them live previously. I find Whitechapel a mixed bag. I don't mind them wrecking it off and find a boring live, so I may not bother too much of them. But that top end, I mean, I just, it's malevolence, man. That, to me, might be one of the sets of the weekend. Architects, I'm torn on. I'm torn on. I really am. Um, I, 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 I'm I, intrigued, and I hope it's a good architect set, but I don't know what to expect of it. It's a, you know... For me, Malevolence are probably going to blow them off the stage beforehand. I suspect that's going to happen. Uh, for me, on this stage, the two main ones that I'm looking forward to are Crypta and Deicide. Mm -hmm. um, I am looking forward to seeing Architects, so you know, I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, whereas I'm a bit more like, oh, okay, for Malevolence. So. I've seen a lot of Malevolence, but it has been a while now since I last saw them. Although mm. I'm pretty sure I have the, the two last times I've seen them have both been at Bloodstock. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But Whitechapel, I'm quite interested to see as I don't think I've caught them before and I'm interested. Um, Malevolence, of course, and Architects I haven't seen for many, many years now. Um, so it's one of those things where if they whip out some bangers from that like free album run that was really fucking good, I'll be stoked, but if it's anything from like the last couple of years, I I switch off. But that's why I'm so confused about it. I'm just wondering what why it could be really good or just really average. I just mm. don't see somebody coming to headline a festival for the first time that's known for a style of music and saying, "Oh, we're going to play experimental shit." Like you know, I'd be surprised if they're going to do that. So, but we'll see. Yeah. We will see. We shall see. Okay, and that brings us to Sunday, with the day beginning by Raised by Owls, followed by Culture Trey, uh, Sowen and Next, Beast in Black, Septic Flesh, Night Flight Orchestra, Flogging Molly, Carcass, and Amon Amarth. I kind of wish this was like the, like the Saturday, because I think I can have a lot of fun on this stage on the Sunday, but it is the last day, and it's the more of a sober day than any other uh, raised by hours, obviously intrigued to see them. I purposely missed them at Mangata on the basis that I would then be checking them out at Bloodstock. I wouldn't mind seeing some culture trait. I like them a lot as well. Septic Flesh, I've never been bad. Um, I'm intrigued to see a bit of the Night Flight Orchestra. I don't know if I'm going to love it for a full set, but I think I can enjoy a song or two. I'm looking forward to seeing Flogging Molly. I think it might be the right vibe for me at the right time. And uh, Carcass and Amon Amarth are both perfectly fine bands for me to check out. Yeah, it's a good day. I mean, we're, we're, we're playing, going to play it by uh, Sunday morning and see how we're feeling. You know, obviously having our daughter there this year and wanting to enjoy Amon Amarth with her as much as anything. Yeah, if yep. we're feeling it, we may drink on the Sunday and drive back early on the Monday morning. But yes. we're going to call it Sunday morning. There's a, you know, in terms of bands that I'm really, really kind of keen on in here, Raised by Owls. Um, wouldn't mind checking out some Beast in Black, just a, a little oh, yeah. dose of the power metal, freshen me up a little bit, maybe. Uh, mm. Septic Flesh, Carcass, and the Monomath. Um, for me, I want to see Raised by Owls. Wouldn't mind checking out a bit of Septic Flesh. Uh, and the Nightfly Corkster and a bit of Flog and Molly, probably, for funsies. I don't care about I'm on a Marth, though, or Carcass. Uh, I've, I know nothing about them, so it's it, it's kind of just nothing for me. Overall, I think uh, we create ourselves a nice festival there to spread around. It isn't the strongest Bloodstock lineup overall for me personally, but that's the that's the taste aspect. One person's not so great bloodstock lineup is another person's dream bloodstock lineup, but it's still more than enough across this festival to keep me more than entertained from a band perspective and from the entertainment perspective. Uh, we are going to be there. We're going to be there all weekend from Thursday 
afternoon onwards. We will be out and about with GoPros. We'll be out filming stuff, talking to people, saying hello inside the VIP area, hanging out, doing the odd interview. A lot less this year, folks. Just a few that we're planning to stick in because we do want to enjoy it and just generally enjoying the festival as we often try to it is going to be a great time we always have a good time so if you do see us do say hello and uh yeah uh, let us know what you're looking forward to seeing who you're looking forward to seeing or who if we didn't mention them who do you think we should go out of our way to see and why you know what to do let us know in the comments thank you very much for watching if you'd like to see more content like this please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website where reviews, news and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.